If you like these videos and want more, remember to like and subscribe. Likes get this video pushed up in suggested videos listings. The more views these videos get the more builds I can do in future videos. As always thanks for watching. MS 460 Motorized Bicycle Build Part 4 Building a Crankshaft Stock MS 460 Connection Rod has a pin center to center of 62 mm. Piston rides on a 36 mm stroke crankshaft. Motorized Bicycle Connection Rod AF80 has a pin center to center of 89 mm. It's riding on a 38 mm stroke crankshaft. This is a difference of 27 um divided by 2 giving you 13.5 mm in each direction plus 1 mm for the 38 mm crank. For a total of 14.5 mm jug will be sitting roughly 13 mm to 14 mm higher than stock MS-460. Solution is to use MS-380 piston with 1.2 mm lower top deck. Alright guys, so what we did is this, okay? So I took uh, a crank I got on eBay. Oh, there you go. I'll explain what these are afterwards. So I took this whole thing apart. Pulled the pin, everything. We took all that crap, weighed it. Put it on a thing and put this on a machine and drill the hole in a hole. both of these to find out how much mass was removed in 12 millimeter deep holes. So, um, what happened was I uh, figured out how much metal mass was removed. So I drilled two more 12 millimeter holes deep, half inch each side. And then all of that mass came out close to what the piston and all the mass of that was. All right. So now we're getting pretty close to actually a decently balanced crank. So uh ended up actually drilling these two holes out. This one about two millimeters deeper and this one about one and a half to get the balance factor to about 75%. <clears throat> Now, you would think, oh my god, that's not very good. Well, funny enough, I mean, I don't know much about the whole crank deal with the place I brought it to. That's all they do. So, I'm just going to explain this pretty quickly. Uh, these are a, they take a piece of hot metal and they put it in a machine and they roll it till they get the form of one of these. So this is like a stamped rolled process to make one of these halves. And then what they do is they machine it afterwards to come up with what you have. And then they case harden them, which is really only about a sixteenth of an inch thick, the case hardening on these. Everything else is soft metal inside. So once you get through the top layer, this thing is like buttered drill. So this is the one I actually used when drilling these. So, anyways, so I got this pretty well in the ballpark. I put it on one of the beams. The thing sat there perfectly with the piston all different directions. I was like, yeah, you know, this shaft was not true. Uh, it's like, holy crap. All right, getting closer. Wow, guys, look at that run out. It's almost not existent. That is pure luck, by the way. Flip the crank to double check. Remember, this is a cheap lathe. 
so super high end results would be near impossible. On some levels this reading is off just cause of the bearings in the lathe. Now what's funny is this thing was actually way out of plane. So now when you look at this thing, the run out between these two points where the bearing sits is actually 0 0.002 millimeters. So this thing is perfectly true now. So not bad. So you'll see this has some dents and stuff in it and I'm really not worried about it. And if you saw how brutal the process was to true this, but <clears throat> technically these are case hardened to the point where they won't dent like this. And with everything China, yeah, of course it wasn't. But, so it's got some dents, not a big deal. So we put it on the thing, it's drewed, everything is perfectly, this is really, really good and balanced. So when I got there and I asked the guy, I said, well, yeah, it's all trued up. I got it pretty close to what it should be. And I'll explain that in a minute. I actually measured all the scrap that came off of this to make sure we were getting in the ballpark. So it was really, really close. Put it on a thing after all that said and done. And it could sit at any angle it wanted with the piston with all the crap on it. And I was like, yeah, this thing is killer. So I took it to the guy and he said, well, we'll balance it for you now. And I said, well, it comes out perfect. And he said, well, normally when you <clears throat> buy one of these in like the motorized bicycle kits, there's only about a 65% true value to it, which is the minimum amount needed for one to run before it starts falling apart from severe vibration. And most of the people that drill these and stuff, I think the common practice is, is a half inch hole and then I think they just drill two more straight through. And that gives it like a balance factor of about 75%, which is pretty damn decent, even if it's not 100% fully balanced. It's almost impossible, even on a high-end race type setup. So when you buy something at the store like a steel chainsaw Husqvarna, the balance factor of that thing is probably about 80%, which is very good quality balance, okay? When you buy like a Ryobi, you know, one of the Walmart crap things or something, <clears throat> you're going to get a balance factor of like maybe 65, 70. And that's all right for running, but the more balance you get, the better, you know, longer life, the bearings, all that good stuff. So I took it to him and what these are is they put it on a machine and they actually take the mass with the piston and, and spin it as they go around and it marks it. So these are actual spots that it counterbalanced as it was making sure everything was good on a computer. So even with that said, like I guess this one here is actually to offset that, believe it or not. So there's a lot of little things to this, but yeah, it's too bad it got dented. I mean, it isn't gonna affect its function, but I mean, to true this thing was a nightmare because this was really off. So it really got beat pretty good. So once it's all said and done, you get it pretty damn true. They, they just, they put it on the machine and balance it the rest of the way. So yeah, the run out's great and it's balanced. So this should be awesome. I got about an 80% balance factor in this. So that's really good. <laughs> So this should last quite a long time for what I'm doing. But anyways, yeah, I mean, that's the basic thing of it. I'm not going to get really into all that. There was a lot to this. But uh, this is going to be perfectly balanced for the MS460. 52 millimeter. So, all right. Peace.
So the moral of the story with this whole crank deal is, is if you're gonna do one for this, um, get a 12 millimeter drill bit or 13 and drill it 12 millimeters deep, three holes each side, and you're gonna be roughly in the ballpark of where you need to be for the piston. So, anyways, that's roundabout what it is. I'd imagine a bigger one. The two holes on the sides, I guess you would drill them all the way through. That pretty much makes sense for why that's what they just do and put them in. So, I did not know about all the balance factors and stuff. It's pretty hard to get perfect. So, anyways, just reflecting on stuff over the last couple days. When I was cutting this, I had an issue where... I wanted to move it over three millimeters this way and I know why because if you look at it one side is a little bit off so investigating this more though if you notice there were the holes originally and I did it dead center of the split which is actually if you look at it you'll notice it's over so I lucked out that I did not in fact move it over because the center of the crank is actually slightly off to one side and that's why they did what they did originally. So I lucked out in that regard. I got more than enough material all over for everything to work still so that's fine. But I'm glad I did change that to the thing. So I'm right now I'm doing a spacer. As you can see, it's got a little lip on it. That's the 52 millimeter jug side, and this side will go in here. And that's how I will be aligning it for when I drill my holes. And I'll be showing that in the next part. But just thinking back to the video where I cut this, that's why I moved it over, thinking that would be a good idea. And I'm lucky I didn't go through with that, and I realized it at the time. So. I followed the original hole and it's actually dead in line with it. I mean these are pretty cheaply made, you know. They don't pay attention. So I mean it's par for the course with these China dolls. So it just depends who made it, when it was made, so forth. But my hole right there is gonna be spot on to the center of the crank and I want that more than it being perfectly centered on the top for looks, you know what I mean? So, it is what it is. We got more than enough material to do everything else we need to. So, alright. Peace. Alright, so I just want to say this before we go any further. Because I'm pretty sure there will be 20 people that have some suggestions and stuff on these. Never built one before. I'm going by what people tell me. That have and so forth. Some say this will dwell too long at the bottom. And some say it'll be perfect, some say you need to switch the piston, some say you don't. I really don't know. I haven't got that far. So this is basically just a learning experience as I go. This is either going to work diesel or it's going to suck. <laughs> but if it does, then we'll go to plan B and change it up a little, you know. So anyways, I like to do these videos. It's a learning process, you know. There's nothing online per se that's like in stone so the whole reason i'm even attacking it like this is i'm just documenting it as i go and i hope if it works out well then at least we got something solid to go by if not i'm gonna figure out how to fix it so that we do so anyways i hope this goes good but here is part four and next will be seeing how this works with every diy project please use common sense and be safe if you're not up to the task for a build like this then find a person that can help you or don't do it it's not a fun hobby if you're already dead from building it